Hail and hello, everyone. Welcome to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, a Midgard Musings production. Join me, Jesse, your host, as we discuss random heathen-related topics and various other things in an attempt to find where, if any, heathen worldviews can be applied. You can support this podcast by clicking on the Linktree link in the description or show notes. You can also follow me on all of my social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and become a patron on Patreon. Join me every Thursday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Central on all major podcast streaming platforms, including Apple and Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Pandora, and many, many. If you wish to have your voice heard on the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, you can dial in to 615-671-9832. Thank you all once again for listening to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast. Enjoy and hail to you all. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to another episode of the random human ramblings podcast hope you guys enjoy uh the new setup the new aesthetic as it were um this is very much a work in progress okay so a lot of what you see behind me um is going to remain um but certain things angles or whatever may change over time so i hope it uh, is appealing for you for those that are watching on the video podcast platforms such as YouTube and Spotify. Um, but for anybody else that's listening across all the multiple platforms that we have available right now, which was uh, a, a, a new platform was recently added, the Amazon music platform that you can catch Random Human Ramblings on. Uh, if any of you guys and gals out here that are listening are wanting to see what I'm talking about, head on over to Spotify or become a, a subscriber of the YouTube channel. Uh, for Midgard Musings and kind of follow along and watch along um, so you guys can see what everybody else sees. This is new. This is um, an idea that I tossed out to the community at large as a question um, a while back and got a lot of good you know, feedback for it or on it. So some, again, some things might change. You know, there might be a few adjustments on the angles and whatnot, but this is what it is uh, right now. And for at least the foreseeable future. I plan to be in some sort of attire like this periodically or at least regularly. Um, so I hope you guys and gals out here enjoy it. If you do, be sure to, to let me know down in the comments, uh, over in the show notes or wherever it is, um, right into the podcast, Midgard Musings, tn at gmail.com. Um, you can also call in. Midgard Musings hotline is 615-671-9832. Leave a voicemail, let me know your thoughts. Um, and then, of course, on the Anchor platform, which is the main platform that this podcast is distributed through, uh, you can send a voice message. So follow the links in the show notes, description area, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, let, me know, let, me know, let me know what you think. <laughs> um, you know, today's, today's show is um, going to be very random, to be honest with you. I got a Great voicemail that I want to uh, listen uh, within all of you from uh, Crow, uh, who's a Gothi, I believe, uh, for a heathen tribe, kindred, what's that, you know, what have you, in uh, the state of Idaho called the Deathlanders. Um, and before we get started into that, though, um, I did want to call attention to a very um, extensive voicemail or, or message that was left here. Um, a couple of weeks ago at this point, week and a half or so ago, um, because uh, I didn't address it on last week's episode. And I feel like that, that wasn't very fair. Um, it, was, it was Emmanuel Freyer, who, uh, if you're watching, listening, uh, thank you for taking the time out of your day to 
the call in and, and leave multiple messages. It's no problem at all. It's not a, it's, you know, I have no issue with it. Um, but uh, upon your request, um, I'm not going to broadcast it um, on the podcast because it is very extensive and it's very detailed um, in, in its nature. Um, but it brings up some really, I think, you know, cool uh, ideas and valuable points, but it has to do with building a heathen community, like a literal heathen center, as it were, um, here in the, you know, lower 48, at least of the continental United States. And uh, man, he was asking a lot of like really specific questions, you know, really good questions. Um, and I'm, I'm inclined to say that, you know, a lot of the questions that were being asked were, were better, would be better positioned to have a dialogue, you know, with, and, 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 and kind of pick brains a little bit and, and, and chew the fat amongst each other, as it were, um, because, you know, he's talking about, you know, I've got these opportunity to build a community with a pretty substantial amount of money up front to to get the whole thing started and he mentions um you know making some sort of a a pledge or i don't want to put words into his mouth but it, it sounds a bit almost like an oath uh to do something within a certain period of time either on his own or with the aid and help of others in the community and the community again um as i've as i've talked about in, um, in other podcasts, you know, the, like the pagan community, heathen community, it's so diverse and it's so spread out, um, even here in, in the United States, where, you know, when you, when you say build a community with people that are heathen, you know, that, that, could, that, could, open up a, that could open up a lot of unwanted and un solicited characters you know what i'm saying um just because of the certain aesthetic and, and and some of the things that people that kind of approach this this religion or this faith um with skewed ideas and skewed thoughts and and, and wrong ideas and wrong thoughts just to be frank um you, you again you kind of open yourself up to when you say i want to have a community i want to build a community i want to have like a centralized hub or location for heathens to be able to come to and gather and, and live and, and cultivate a, a community and have, you know, he, he's talking about things like, you know, um, have a central hof, um, basically like, which we see in, in some historical um, references in like Uppsala and old Uppsala, Sweden, the, the heathen temple there, something of, of an equivalence here in the States, you know, having something like that and then having homes built on said land and having schools and and uh basically being somewhat of like a um closed off to the outside world and I, and I don't mean to like um put words again into into, into your mouth uh Emmanuel Frere uh but it it, it, rem it it reminded me of almost like a um a community similar to like what the Amish have where they're in the world but not part of the world as it were you know, so they have their, their schoolhouses and they have their shops and they have their, you know, people within the community that, that do things for that community alone. So it, it was very reminiscent to me when I, I listened to your uh, multiple messages that came through, uh, very reminiscent of something like that. And um, it's very ambitious. It's a very ambitious goal, you know, um, and nothing like this comes, like you mentioned, um, in his voicemail, voicemails, again, it was, it was drawn out over probably five minutes or so worth of, of messages and um, ideas and just kind of talking through it all and stuff. Like, I, I get your goal and I get your idea, and I think it's very ambitious. Um, and I understand that you understand that this sort of thing takes a lot of effort, a lot of money, a lot of time, um, and a lot of collaboration, you know, like he, uh, he mentions about having this goal of his achieved with you know by i think he said uh, within 15 years and um 
or, or sooner with, with the right help. And he mentioned some things, you know, like, uh, you know, that he's not a prominent person in the pagan community. Or he's, or I think he even said, I'm a nobody. And I, you know, first of all, if you're coming out and, and talking about doing something like what you're describing to do, um, that does not make you a nobody. That makes you quite the somebody, in my opinion, you know, to think about um, having a centralized location, uh, even if it's one place in the United States, people would be willing to travel to, people would be willing to come and perhaps set up homes uh, in and on this land that you talk about, you know, purchasing. The guy, the guy is going into some very heavy duty stuff, you know, talking about um, selling his home and selling his belongings and stuff and actually like reshifting his whole uh, lifestyle, you know, lifestyle that others in his circle and others within his in guard, I'm sure, would be impacted and affected by. Um, it's, it, again, it's a very ambitious um, goal and, 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 and something to have, but, uh, you know, having that kind of goal and, and knowing what goes with it He's asking a lot of questions and he kind of posed the question to be something like, Hey, maybe you could be the voice or would you want to be a part of it? Meaning, you know, myself um, and all that sort of thing. And I've, you know, had uh, several weeks, well now two weeks since you, you called this, this in, you know, week and a half, two weeks, I guess now um, to, to kind of ponder it and whatnot. And again, I'm, I'm, I'm so excited to hear that a person, one person um, is, is, presented with an opportunity to do something with their possessions, with their land, with their homes even, and have that be the thing that starts something for a larger audience, for a broader audience, for people to have a place, a centralized place that, you know, um, they have a commonality, you know? Um, and again, it, it becomes very, it's, it's so, it's so ambitious and it's so great to think about it, but then there's also some reservations that I have about it too, because, you know, you talk about the day and age that we live in and so much of the legislation that you have to go through to, to be able to do things like this on a scale and, and be recognized by the government. And, and then, you know, you've got the government involved and look what happened with the indigenous people of the you know, North America, when the government got involved and, you know, so on and so forth. And it just becomes so uh, deep when you think about um, the potential that's there and then the hurdles that come along with it. And again, it's not something that, you know, you're going to achieve overnight or even within a very short period of time. You know, we're talking about a decade or more or more um, if, 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 he takes it on as like a solo project and, but he, he made this pledge. He made this statement uh, as I understand that at least to do the thing. And, you know, as, as, as heathens, when, when we say that, when, when we, when we put that out there um, to whatever degree, you know, I mean, like you're, you're, um, you're, uh, you're putting your reputation on the line. You're putting your luck on the line. And I believe Emmanuel Ferrer, if you're watching, listening, what have you, um, to my knowledge and understanding, you you serve a, a, a position amongst your, your kindred, amongst your tribe, um, uh, within your small uh, or whatever size heathen or pagan circle as, as Goldie, you know, so you have a, a position of leadership and of responsibility that others in your circle will look to as a um, position of a uh, you know, they, they, they rely on you and they, and they hold you to a standard, you know? So when you put your name out there and you put your everything out there on the line, as you do, um, you now have things like, uh, again, your reputation, your refrain uh, on the line, and you are, you are potentially, um, you guys can't hear it, but there's thunder there's thunder rolling right now. Um, there's a thunderstorm that's rolling through and I hear the thunder rolling. Uh, you put your um, reputation on the line, but you, then you, you're starting to establish what we, we look at as, as frith, right? Because now you're, you're, you're putting out something that um, 
you 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 have obligation now to do the thing that you say you're going to do right it's kind of like it's and it's an interesting uh timing of things you know where, where this whole obligation um frith and and all that plays um in and plays a factor because um i myself have uh my own uh Yifrain and my own luck and everything like that online but the, my luck that i'm tying to the luck of my tribe as chieftain of our tribe um it, you know i have a, a grave responsibility to um achieve what i've set out to do within the time that i've set out to do it um and it's great like it's great to do that because again it, it secures strong luck uh, for those that you're nearest and dearest with and it, and it does good things if you fail then it can be detrimental but if you approach it in a way that you um you know set out the goal and, and you achieve that goal um then the luck becomes so strong and it, and it is added to the well and becomes part of the orlog later on down the line and um it, it again becomes potentially really good things um but the timing of it like talking about this and, and thinking about this now and, and understanding that you have put something out there that you are now obligated to do because you 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 don't speak to the gods you don't you don't declare these things among your kith and kin you don't you don't say these things you don't swear these types of oaths lightly and you don't set a goal without first understanding the challenges ahead of you um and 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 really and truly uh if you do that without understanding then then hopefully you've had uh the checks and balances set in place you know uh, somebody who can kind of call you out and be like whoa 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 what do you mean you're going to do xyz within 15 years you know what what happens if this that and the other and hopefully all of those you know uh factors have been considered um before taking on such a enormous such a, a an immense and such a, a, a an impressive and ambitious undertaking because like i say you know for one person to take what they own and take their livelihood and and, and sell it to be able to provide the opportunity to have something for a larger community that says a lot about an individual's character and it's very uh I mean that's that's some powerful main. I think is 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 the word I would use is main. Your power, your might at that point is is speaks a lot. You know, um, not a lot of people would first of all entertain that idea because it would it would scare them. It would it would put them in a position of of taking a risk too great to to run it right. Um, and you know, you asked me some very pointed questions. Um, during your call and asked me about what I would be willing to do or be involved in. And I, and I am apprehensive right now to the point of, of committing to anything. I am very keen in following this, you know, especially when you say it's, you know, a long-term sort of goal. Um, I'm very keen on following it and, and approaching it in that way. And as you also requested in your call is I was I'm opening this up to the community the majority of my audience is here in the United States. And if anybody who would be interested in being a part of this and wanting to help you has opportunities themselves that they're looking to, to exhaust, right? Maybe they have resources, maybe they have things that would benefit you in your endeavors. Um, here's an opportunity for us to perhaps open up um open this up to a to a larger and wider audience you know um and so that's why when i said at the beginning where i'd be i'm, I'm, I'm really leaning heavily on wanting to have a dialogue about this and get some sense and understanding of you know where things are at and where things could potentially go and then and then perhaps develop a plan or help in that sort of way, develop a plan of whether or not I'm directly involved, but at least give this some sort of a platform and give this some sort of a, you know, running start as it were and get people because I'm just one person and you're just one person, but together 
especially on like this platform and these, these platforms where people are listening, watching, etc. Hey, you know, I want to be a part of something. I want to help because guess what? I have X, Y, Z. I have something that I could contribute to this. And, and when are you doing it? And where are you located? And, oh, I know about some of the, you know, um, legislation that's involved in doing something like this. And maybe, you know, networking can take place and we can set the wheels in motion to get this, um, to get this idea, you know, some steam and get it actually moving because it, it starts with one person. And that's what I wanted to ton, kind of touch on is that, you know, don't think that just because you're one person and that, oh, I'm just, you know, I'm a nobody. You're not a nobody. You know what I'm saying? Like you're one person expressing an idea or a thought. And that thought is being shared out now to, to hundreds, if not more um, people. And who knows whose ears this may come across and where this could go. And so it's, it's a seed that gets planted. You know, the greatest and strongest of oak trees started off in a small acorn. You know, um, the, the, the most powerful, the most robust flavors of, of, of herbs and, 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 and things start off with just a minute little seed. You know, the beach is made up of minute and tiny grains of sand and each one of them are important to make up that beach so everybody has a role and everybody has a part and it's just a matter of what our part is and, and how far we're willing to go and what we're willing to do to um, establish ourselves in the annals of history right because we do live in saga times and, the, and saga times will continue so where do we put ourselves down in that saga you know well, Emmanuel Freire starts by declaring that he wants to establish a, a heathen community, a central hub of sorts of, of heathens where there's education, there's farming, there's medicine, there's healthcare, there's, you know, schooling, there's worship, there's all these things that make up what a heathen community is in a centralized location. Um, and he's willing to, to get that ball rolling. He's looking for help. And so me in my way, without having the greatest voice in the pagan community, but having a voice, here I am talking about it and extending an idea um, and a thought. And then, you know, yeah, by, the, by the time this podcast airs, you know, um, Emmanuel, I'm going to have sent you an email. Um, so that way you are tuned in and, and, and that you at least catch this, this episode of, of, the, of the podcast and that you know that I didn't ignore your, uh, reaching out and that I'm not by any means disheartened or, or discouraged of your, you know, four or five uh, voicemails. And it's, it's no big deal. Uh, I have no problem with it. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm glad that you did. And I'm glad that you were so relentless. And I, and I uh, want to see about potentially talking more about it in real time. Perhaps we can get on a, you know, a call or, or whatever here and then have it, um, I don't know we, whether it's aired or not, like that's not the biggest importance to me, but at least we get something started where other people that hear this can, can follow back up because I'm sure this is, this is going to pique some interest at, at the very least people are going to be intrigued and, and want to be, you know, know more about well, what's going on. Where is this? Where even is this? Cause I mean, I'm going to be honest. I'm, I'm not a hundred percent sure without going back through and, and looking, um, I want to say it's in like, you know, the, the West ish area of the United States, the West coast area, but I, I can't, I don't want to, you know, put my name on the line for that. So again, wherever and, and, and whenever, and however, I think there's going to be some, some interest peaked in this because this doesn't sound like something that has been, um, I mean, I think that, that something like this is e either being attempted or has been attempted in the past, but I don't know of the updates on it or, or, or where things are at. So, you know, maybe this is the thing, maybe this is a thing, maybe this could become a thing. And, and maybe there's people that will find a home or place that they can call home because of this thing. And I would love to, you know, um, at least uh, at this point right now with, with what limited, you know, information I have is, is, explore opportunities and then without committing to anything 100 give give at least what i can to to hear you out and provide perhaps a a platform for for more information uh to be shared and more knowledge to to be spread about it um and maybe other people who have 
other resources themselves can collaborate with you and, and be a help in that way as well. So I do appreciate your um, calling in and sharing all the information that you shared, Emmanuel Frere. I raise my glass to you and toast. So hail and skull, thank you so much. And all right, um, I did have um, something that I did want the, the, the listeners and the viewers to, to hear. Um, if I can figure out, yeah, I think that's the one. Maybe. Uh, let's see. Let's try this one. Uh, no, nope, that's not it. Working off this new system and I'm figuring out certain things about what I'm trying to do. And uh, am I able not to, to do it? We shall see. Um, see ba boom no nope. it says computer audio oh is it this is it because of this let's try that no it's not mm. i need content from another camera well Maybe I don't get to listen, or maybe we don't get to share the audio this week because of technical challenges. It's telling me that I want to share my computer audio, but then I can't share it. Hmm. Maybe that's something for next week then. Um, Unless, nope, that ain't it. Hmm. We're figuring it out together. So exciting when you figure out things together, especially when you're on uh, a new new system. Hmm. Oh, why it's not letting me just share the audio. That's all I want to do. That's all I want to do is just share the audio. I don't want to share audio from another device. Okay, I'll figure it out and maybe we'll come back uh, to it at another time because. Otherwise, I'm just going to sit here and bore you all with me clicking around and trying to figure out how to do this. Um, but we'll figure it out at another time. Uh, but it does come from uh, Crow from the uh, Deathlanders uh, tribe out in Idaho. Um, and he made, brings up some really useful and good points. And I did want to make sure that we talked about it. So that'll be something for, for next week's episode. It's kind of riding off the coattails of um this past week's episode about self-care and all that kind of stuff which by the way i hope that you know all of you are taking care of yourselves and it, it that, that that particular episode has actually gotten a lot of traction <laughs> um a lot of good response and a lot of good um feedback so um you guys keep keep uh taking care of yourselves out there um as a matter of fact uh I'm looking forward to coming back next week. And I think that the whole like technical hiccup or whatever that I'm experiencing right now, just learning curves, right? Um, I think that next week's episode where we listen to, to Crow's um, voicemail. So Crow, I know you listen. I know you watch and catch what we do here. Apologies that we couldn't get it um on this week's episode but it's coming i think it's going to be good timing because next week uh next week's episode is going to be on the following seager bloat um i've been talking about seager bloat um almost as much as i've talked about like the upcoming yule uh festivities and stuff and it's you know 
it, it's fitting because Sigurd Bloat for, for, for us and our tribe here in Middle Tennessee is like, it's a big deal, you know? Um, I'm in the process of writing ritual um, for that night. And as it stands right now, uh, we may have a potential chance of, you know, some showers or rain or whatever that day, but uh, it's, it's very minimal. Uh, the temperatures look actually to be quite lovely. Um, and that's going to be Saturday. So for everybody that's catching this not live now and, and occurring right now, it's, you know, two days prior to our Seager Bloat event. Um, and it's falling on the, the night of the full moon, uh, which is almost perfect. That's like the fact that it hits that way and that we're able to celebrate it on that day um, is really ideal. And, uh, you know, in the past, we'll, we'll, we make accommodations, you know, for scheduling purposes. You know, if it's a few days early or whatever, we're going to do it when the rest of like when all of us can get together and do it, you know, comfortably and without having to impact our our work lives too much. So. Fortunately, we're getting to do it on the actual day of the, of the start of Seager Bloat, which in historical times was, was a, a three-day long uh, celebration. But uh, we're doing it the one night. Um, I know that our Gothi and his daughter are, are going to be camping overnight on the grounds of the Vey, um, surrounding, you know, on the family lands. And, and uh, I, I, I personally won't be camping that night, nor will our law speaker uh, due to prior already established obligations with family the following day because it just so happens that the christians uh celebration of easter is the day after our cigar bloat celebration so we have family uh things to do and uh but i'm excited to talk about what's going to be happening um of cigar bloat at, or, or on cigar bloat for us at least and and talk about what things that we can talk about because I'm in the process of, of writing ritual for that. Um, we're going to be doing like a, we usually do a, 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 a variation of a wicker man um, on cigar blood, at least we have in the past. And that's the plan uh, for this year as well is to do something like that. And um, I don't know, it's going to be, I think it's going to be a really fun conversation next week. And maybe I get Dingo to come in and, and, and talk about it because of course he'll be there. <laughs> Him and his daughter will be there. And uh, Patrick, our law speaker, will be there as well. So uh, who knows? Who knows who we have on next week's episode to talk about it? Um, because I think it'll be, I mean, it's almost a guaranteed it's going to be something that, you know, there's some, there's some interesting topics or whatever to talk about. So I'm excited about it. I'm excited about everything leading up to it um, and uh, all the preparations involved. And it's like, you know, I think. Uh, for those that maybe catch the last or caught catched oh, the English language, it's going to get you uh, for those that caught the, the, the episode week before last um, where Dingo and I were talking about the ritual leading up to ritual or the preparation of a ritual and that, you know, the ritual itself, um, what you would, what you would classify, what you would call the ritual itself is, is, is almost ceremonial at that point, because everything that leads up to that moment is the actual ritual, right? So we talked about the preparations of the grounds and, and just mentally preparing and the work that goes into it all. Um, same and it's very similar sort of thing. You know, we've got the land cleared, we've got it prepared, but we've also got some prep to do beforehand. Um, we got to get there early. We got to, assemble our wicker man you know um, we have to you know do that thing we have to cart you know cut enough wood for those who will be camping dingo and his daughter uh to have warmth and stuff overnight which it's not supposed to be terribly cold overnight thankfully um but at least that way they have it and they can keep the fire going and, and have a, a warm place to to assemble around the following day you know so all of that again is 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 important because it's the Everything leading up to that ritual, everything leading up to our ritual, the preparation of it, it puts you in that mindset and it puts you in that headspace. Um, and uh, but I have, I am, I'm really excited about being there and and um, having our, our our ritual and uh, talking about it a bit afterwards, as much as we're able to, in this in this way, you know, share what we want to share and, and talk about what we want to talk about and. Uh, Maybe, you know, maybe you folks are, are, are planning a, a cigar bloat event 
uh, for the weekend coming up. Um, so if you are and you want to share, um, you can definitely write into the podcast, Midgard Musings TN at gmail.com, or do like Emmanuel Frere did and call and leave six voicemails. Let's talk about it. Let's hear about what you did. Um, let's, let's, let's hear about the, the special moments that you had, um, you know, for, for your so your bloat, if that's what you're doing. Um, if you prefer not to talk about it, you know, no pressure at all whatsoever, but the offer is there and uh, the thoughts are there. So, um, aside from that, you know, I mean, just sipping on some scotch tonight, um, new format, new backdrop, new display. Hope you've all enjoyed it. Um, I did want to just briefly mention something that I know a lot of people on my side of the family, if they're still doing the thing that they've always done, they're going to see this and they're going to hear this. So this one's really for them, but it's also for somebody else, for, for, for other people here too, because I'm sure that this is going to hit the nail is going to be hit on the head of many nails. Like we're going to hit the nail uh, on multiple heads here. We're going to hit the multiple heads of many nails. I don't know. Anyway, um, what was it uh, earlier this week Sunday um, my niece my wife's niece my, our, our niece um, was baptized and I, the reason why I'm mentioning this is because I've gotten a lot of messages emails um People have asked questions on different platforms about, um, you know, what to do when, you know, you have to be in a church and, and oh, I'm pagan and are the gods going to be mad at me, blah, blah, blah. Here we go, right? Classic example. You, 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 what, what, what we talk about here on this podcast and then some of the subject matters that, that come up, it's like, I don't, I don't, uh, First of all, I don't advocate for doing things that I wouldn't first myself necessarily do. And when it comes to like the involvement of uh, uh, or integration, I guess it would be probably the best term of, um, you know, you as a pagan or we as pagans uh, in our, our, how our lives intertwine with our families who are, who are not pagan. Okay. And uh, how much of a conflict that that can cause and the challenges that we face when it happens and so on and so forth. Um, this past, you know, weekend was, it was a great example of, you don't, you, you know, you, you make mountains out of molehills when you think about stuff too much. And uh, our niece, you know, she's seven months old and her mother and the family wanted to, you know, have a, a celebration of, a, of, of their, you know, baby girl's um, life to declare a, a, a connection to the Christian faith. Um, and I have my opinions about it and my opinions don't really matter at, 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 at the moment. I'm going to feel the way I feel and that's okay. You, everybody can feel the way they want to feel. Um, but the fact of it, is is that i i i didn't uh i didn't lose any credibility with the gods i didn't lose any credibility with my ancestors if anything i um carried them with me by going to this church sitting in this assembly and celebrating this event um and being there in support you don't have to necessarily agree or or, or follow the same path but I get it. I understand where they're coming from with it. And if anything else, like, I mean, I've attended a lot of, of, of Christian services. I've attended Catholic mass. I've been to Pentecostal sermons. You know, I've, I've, I've seen, um, you know, Baptist services, Methodist services. This particular one this past week was at a Methodist church okay which 
you know, let's add some levity to the situation. You know, Methodists are, are the Catholics that just weren't fully committed. You know, they're, they're, the, they're the, the, the light version of Catholicism. Um, similar to what I would say is the, uh, you know, Catholics are, are pagans in denial <laughs> because it's so ritualistic, man. Like it's so sit up, stand down, say this, say that, do this, do that. Very ritualistic. And the, 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 the approach of things, the way they did it, the, how they involved the community, right? Their, their church family, whatever. It's, it's, there's elements there that you could take and, and, and learn from on a, on, a, on a heathen tribal scale, on a heathen level. You know, the way that they declare uh, devotion to their deity, the way that they, you know, come together to support one another and be there for one another for, for a sacred rite, you know, something that for them, the baptismal vows are, are sacred and uh, to, to sit and be witness to it, um, if you've never been, is, 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 an, is a very educational experience. Um, and, I, and I've talked to, or I've not necessarily talked to, but I've seen enough interactions of people online where they're like, I don't want to go into that church because the gods will be mad at me and this, that, or whatever. I'm like, they don't care. <laughs> they, they don't care about that. The fact is, is I went because my wife is like, I want to go to support, you know, her niece. And uh, I said, well, then I'll be there with you. And that's family, and that's kin, and that's Orlog, and that's all the things that really mean something to me as, as in my pagan path, in the way that I heathen, you know, not telling anybody else how they should be heathening, or how you should be a pagan, or how he should be a pagan, or she or they, or whatever, but that's how it worked for me, and it was, you know, it was, it was, a, it was a, 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 a way for me to be like, hey, guess what, I may be pagan, and I may hold my devotions to deities that the Christian path abhors or, you know, damns me and condemns me for believing in, but that's not me. I'm not going to be the one to condemn or damn anybody for their belief. If anything, I will be there beside them because they are kin to me because they've never done anything wrong to me. So guess what? I will be there in support. And I did, I went, um, uh, you know, no, no outward visible signs of my paganism, other than the fact that, you know, these rings never come off and they, you know, they, they carry certain pagan symbols. Um, but I'm not like, you know, flaunting myself in a church with a hammer on or whatever like that. I, I, you know, what does that do? What does that prove? There's nothing, there's nothing that's going to add good for good luck for my, for my Orlog, you know, or, or, or to my luck that that becomes Orlog later on, that doesn't do anything for me, you know? Um, and I know where, where I stand with the gods and I know where I stand with my ancestors and I do what I do um, to, to add to my luck. The gods will observe or, or not. And it's, you know, they're, they're busy doing their things or, or whatever. I know where I stand. So you can do it. You can do it too. Anybody can do it. You don't have to feel weird about walking into a church because, oh, I'm pagan. And guess what? I've also been told that I'm possessed. I'm told that because, you know, I, I put on a, a facade when I'm in ritual or, or, or I really embrace the ritual theater aspect of my practices, you know, this whole, you know, get up right here, right now, like the, the hooded thing, the, 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 the tunic, the, staff and, and and everything like that i mean when i when i get into a ritual state when i do my thing i really get into it and if that's been recorded and my visage has been seen as what could appear to be as being possessed right uh, well guess what you know this possessed pagan you know um didn't burst into flames <laughs> walking into uh, uh the house of god as it were uh, because I respect their God, and I respect the fact that 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 deities and and sacred beings exist across many cultures and across many pantheons, um, and they are they are not the same as us as as humans. They are you know that's not the way I see it at least. And so, you know, whatever I I I, I may not venerate, I may not call to that specific deity, um, 
or, or give that deity any sort of worship or veneration, but they are um, still what they are. And I, and I don't uh, disrespect them on their ground as it were, because I feel like there's something to be said for that. So that's where I'm at. That's where I'm at with it. And um, for those listening and watching that um, are, are literal blood kin to me, there you go. Um, the doctrine over the years that has been taught and that has been sp spread around as being the ultimate truth. Um, there, there, there's more to the world. There's more to you. There's more to us. There's more to everything than what a 63 or 64 book manuscript has to offer. Cause that's all we actually have. There's, there's way more to that. That's not documented. There's way more to that. That's not been written down. Matter of fact, the religion that I follow, most of it hasn't been written down. So we're all still figuring it out. We're all still learning. We're all still getting our, you know, navigating through those waters. So there's my piece about it. And that's all I'm going to say about it. And at least for today, at least for this podcast, at least for this episode. So until next time and until I figure out how to get uh, crows, um, voicemail recorded or recording shared right now again like i don't know why like i've been able to do it before on a, on a on a different device and on a, you know different ways i'm not sure why we couldn't get it this week but everything happens for a reason so we got to learn right we got to figure things out and i hope that this week's episode has uh given all of you uh some things to think about so more to come um on the whole Emmanuel Frere, heathen community, land, building, homes, hof, stuff like that. More to come on that. Um, I think this is just kind of a start. Um, so we shall see where it goes. And uh, Emmanuel Frere, I will have sent you back an email. Um, I think I have your email. I said before that I'd send you an email. And then I'm thinking about it right now. So do I have an email? Pretty sure I have your email. Um, so if I don't send you an email, it's because I shot myself in the foot <laughs> and didn't actually know of an email. But if you get one, um, boom, yeah, it'll be there. Um, so for everybody else, you know, listening, watching, um, I hope you have enjoyed this new setup because um, this is the way it's going to be. Um, and if you do like it, be sure to give the video a thumbs up. I have more stuff hopefully coming down the pipeline very soon. Um, in terms of frequent YouTube live streams. Um, for those who are patrons on Patreon, there's going to be new stuff, updates coming with that as well. YouTube channel members, there might be some things coming around. I'm really trying to focus more on Midgard Musings as a, as a, as a whole and as a brand um, and do the most for, for the folks that do for me um, so that you guys you know, continue to um, enjoy and, and come back for more. So um, I do appreciate each and every one of you. The, the link tree link that's in the description and in the show notes contains all the ways that you can support this podcast and the YouTube channel as a, as a brand. Uh, please consider checking all of those out, um, each and every one of them. If you want to just follow me, like the videos, subscribe to my social media, that greatly helps. Um, that anything else that you want to do monetarily, the, there's PayPal, there's, there's the spring merchandise, there's Patreon, there's becoming a member of the YouTube channel, there's buy me a coffee, there's an app for that. Um, and it's all in the link tree link. So be sure to please check it out and find whatever fits you the best um, and consider helping support this podcast in that way. Um, but if not, just listening, watching, subscribing, commenting and engaging in this way is plenty and enough. And I greatly appreciate that support. So until we all talk again, may the gods smile upon you and may your ancestors continue to walk with you. See you next time.